In our earlier discussion of number theory, we spent some time talking about the binary representation of a decimal number and why that was important to computer science. In that discussion, we made a pretty big assumption. We implicitly assumed that it's possible to write every decimal integer in its corresponding binary form. Well, in this lecture, we're going to use strong induction to prove both that it's possible to do that for every integer and that the binary representation of a given integer is unique. So that's really all this theorem is, is saying here. And I know uh, it's kind of wordy there. There's a lot of subscripts going on. But look, all this is saying is I can write n as the sum of a bunch of powers of 2. right? And we, we know that first, that leading coefficient has to be 1. So we know that that really is uh, the, the biggest term in the sum. And then all the other terms have to be either 0 or 1. That's really all this is saying. So to do this, uh, we're going to do it in, for, in two parts. First, uh, we're going to show existence. Then on the next slide, we'll, we'll start over again with a clean page uh, and show uniqueness. All right, so to show existence, we're, we're going to use strong induction. So our basis step is to look at the smallest positive integer. Right? Let's look at n equals 1. Uh, if n equals 1 and a sub 0 equals 1 and r equals 0, then a sub 0, r to the 0 equals 1. There we go. We I actually came up with the binary representation representation of one. All right. So um, our in, our induction step now. Suppose n is a positive integer. Our induction hypothesis will be that every number smaller than n, so let me write this, assume every positive integer smaller than n has a binary representation. In other words, it can be written in that form of there. I'm, I'm going to avoid writing that big, long polynomial looking thing over and over again uh, and as much as I can but just just by using that phrase if I say has a binary representation that means it can be written in that form so now to show existence we're, we're going to do this in two parts right first if n is even then n divided by 2 is an integer, and n divided by 2 is less than n. So the induction hypothesis applies to it. Right? And this is telling me that, therefore, by the induction hypothesis, n divided by 2 has a binary representation. It can be written in that form. So first, let me clear up my handwriting here. Sorry, that's an n up there. So this equals a sub r 2 to the r plus a sub r minus 1 2 to the r minus 1 plus so on down to a sub 1 2 to the first plus a sub 0, right? It can be written in that form with those assumptions. Now, multiply both sides by 2. If we do that, this becomes n equals uh, a sub r 2 to the r plus 1 plus a sub r minus 1 2 to the r plus so on out to a to the first 2 squared plus a to the 0 times 2. And if you really want to see that constant term, you can go ahead and write a 0 out there at the end. Right? This is the form that we were looking for. Therefore, n has a binary 
I'm running out. I'm going to crowd it up against that. Sorry. N has a binary representation. Sorry, I know that's sloppy looking. Right? And that's what we need to show for when N is even. Now, if N is odd, if N is odd, then N minus 1 is even. So n minus 1 divided by 2 is an integer, and it's less than n. So again, our uh, inductive, sorry, inductive, our inductive hypothesis applies here, and I can write n minus 1 divided by 2 in this special form. So on out to a sub 1, 2 to the first, plus a sub 0. Now, if we multiply both sides by 2, and we, we actually did that already, right? If we multiply both sides by 2, we get this form again. And then I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Right? So n equals a sub r, 2 to the r plus 1, plus a r minus 1, 2 to the r plus so on out to a sub 1, 2 squared, plus a sub 0 times 2, plus 1. There's the 1 that I added, right? That is that binary representation form. Therefore, this n can also be written in binary form and that's what we needed to show right we, we've shown that regard that for both possible for all the possible cases odd and even it is possible to take a positive integer and write it in that binary representation so now to prove a, a uniqueness uh, we're actually not going to use strong induction here we're going to do this one by contradiction Right, so assume there exists a positive integer n with two binary representations. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do so. Let's, let's call the first one. Uh, I'm just gonna do exactly the way it looks up there. A sub r two to the r plus a r minus 1, 2 to the r minus 1, out to a sub 1, 2 to the first, plus a sub 0. And let the, I'm going to do the other one. Now, it's got to be different, right? I don't know that they're the same length, so I can't use r again. And obviously, the coefficients are presumably going to be different. So let's do uh, c sub s, 2 to the s plus c s minus 1, 2 to the s minus 1, so on, out to c sub 1, 2 to the first, plus c sub 0. All right, so assume that r is the smaller of the two. All right, so we're going to assume that r is less than s. Okay, now... That, that expression on the on the left there, the, the R one, this A sub R, 2 to the R, this one here, whoops, R, 2 to the R minus 1. Some of these A's are going to be 0, right? Some of these are, it might be 0. So this expression is less than or equal to 2 to the R plus 2 to the R minus 1 plus 2 to the r minus 2, plus so on, down to 2 to the first, plus 2 to the 0. In other words, if I replace every one of those a's with 1, I either all of them were 1 already, and I get the same number, and they're equal, or a 0 got replaced with a 1, in which case the number got bigger. Now, that thing on the right-hand side, that's a geometric series. Right? And we have a formula for the sum of 
a geometric series. This is equal to 2 to the r plus 1 minus 1. But because r is less than s, this is less than 2 to the s. And that creates a problem. Right, because re refer back to this equation up here. A sub r, 2 to the r, plus out to, I'm going to leave out a lot of the middle terms. You know what this looks like by now, right? This is equal to that thing on the right. But now remember, this thing on the right, that c sub s is 1, because it's the first coefficient. So this is 2 to the s plus all these other things, right? Plus uh, C S minus one, two to the S minus one, plus so on out here to the end. All right, but this is a problem. If this representation is less than two to the S, then it's certainly less than 2 to the s plus a bunch of stuff, right? So our if, if this is less than 2 to the s, then it's certainly less than 2 to the s plus all of those other things. And that's a contradiction because we assumed up here that the two are equal, right? And you remember how proof by contradiction works? Because we ended up with a contradiction, our initial assumption must be false, therefore n does not have two different representations in binary. And that completes that completes the second half. Now we've shown both existence and uniqueness. Okay, so that's the last of our proofs of uh, proofs by strong induction. Uh, and we do have one more lecture to go in, in this section. In, in the next lecture, we're going to take a look at mathematical induction or weak induction, strong induction, and the well-ordering principle and talk a little bit about how those three things relate to each other.